This is Gayatri Jairaman. Welcome to Shamaha. Those of you who've been logging in on a daily basis, I'm uh, so glad to hear from you, your comments, questions, and suggestions. Those of you who are new, welcome. I hope you find something here that benefits you. Uh, do remember these are just general observations, not uh, individual therapy or you know interventions for a specific cause. So just take what resonates and leave the rest. Um, Today I wanted to talk about something that not a lot of us learn as we're growing up. In fact, we learn quite the opposite. This is emotional independence. When we grow up, we are taught in many ways by our parents, by our culture, by our society, by the uh, fantasies that we feed to grow up into a space of emotional dependence. We cultivate codependency. What does this mean? Emotional codependency basically is when we rely on another for the validation of our feelings. Right? So we're constantly looking to someone in the early years, it's our mothers, it's our fathers, it's our siblings, to let us know what our feelings are, whether their expression is valid, and whether it has a specific outcome. So let's say you're a toddler, and you begin to cry. If you notice a lot of toddlers, when they start to cry, will look at their mother's expression. And based on their mother's expression, they get vital feedback. Is this a valid reason for which I'm crying? So the mother, when she knows that the child is hungry, will say, yes, yes, I'm coming, I'm coming. And the child knows that that crying is therefore valid. When the child is crying without reason, uh, you know, just bawling to throw a tantrum and the mother is like, no, no, I'm busy. I'm looking away. I'm, I don't have time to deal with this or I'm not going to indulge this. Then the child quickly learns that that crying is not valid. In this way, our emotions are constantly looking for validation externally. Okay, so we know then therefore what to express, when to express it and how much to express it. And this is a very essential part of growing up. However, we can also cultivate this to the extent that we become emotionally codependent. What this means is that we become incapable of knowing what to express, how to express and when to express unless we receive that validation. There is a certain point at which our own meter for uh, a meter and measure for how much all these parameters should be needs to kick in. And when that does not happen, either because we've never been weaned off the system of validation from someone else, or because we've become clingy and that has been indulged, or we've never actually had the opportunity to go out and be emotionally independent, uh, we become this kind of person who looks to others to say is what I'm feeling okay and here's the problem with constantly looking outside to say is what I'm feeling okay there's going to be a point at which somebody is going to turn around to you and say what you're feeling is not okay but does that negate the fact that you are feeling it right sometimes you're feeling things and there is no uh, bounce back coming from your external environment and this happens most often with uh, people who are LGBTQ uh, who realize they are different who feel misfits in various ways and uh, who have just a different um, you know temperament uh, who who just have discovered their own ways of doing things and then they look externally to the people who have always provided them with this validation 
and they realize the bounce back is not there the reflection is not there and this leads to a process of self denial right uh, a lot of times this uh, can go this can go two ways one is that you quickly realize that the validation meter does not necessarily have to be integrated to what others are telling you and so you develop your own the second way is you start denying your own emotions and say no no it doesn't match what other people are showing me therefore i must be wrong and what is the difference between these two approaches the first one is emotionally independent the second one is emotionally codependent emotional codependence leads to repression suppression denial um and a whole lot of frustration emotional independence allows you to find your own way uh to begin to gauge your own emotional levels and arrive at your own expression of them right and that is the first step towards any sort of independence so how do we become emotionally independent it's easier said than done right a lot of us we've been trained like this we've been conditioned like this we've been told this is the right thing to do and suddenly you know we have to go against all of that and say no no i trust myself more than i trust everybody who's taught me everything i know so it's not easy and it's not always desirable right there are times when we're throwing a really major tantrum and we don't see it but other people are telling us that look what you're doing is not right so there is also that you also need the containment you also need the measure by which to know whether what you're feeling is right or wrong is appropriately expressed or inappropriately expressed and whether you're what we call overreacting right so these measures to a certain extent are important okay it's like a friend's mother once told me um that when he was a child uh he called an elder at the table stupid and of course we all know the rule for respecting your elders so the mother very gently corrected him and said to him you can't say you're stupid you have to say you're stupid sir okay yeah. so it's perfectly fine to go against the norm but you have to do it respectfully and we have to do it in ways that are still appropriate so by no means is anybody saying you have to conform to all the boundaries either extreme is going to leave us extremely frustrated right so we have to come to a specific balance and how do we come to that balance when it comes to emotional independence what are the things that we have to do in order to get there the very first thing is begin to name your emotions i find it a very useful tool that any time i'm sitting around and i'm just feeling something okay i'm not sure what it is it could be boredom it could be you know uh frustration it could be lack of motivation sometimes you know you just sit there and you just have this feeling you don't know what it is whenever you don't know what it is you're feeling and this works very well especially when you're really really angry with the person just sit and contemplate and name all the emotions that are arising in you so say boredom say frustration say lack of motivation lack of opportunity right everything you can think of that seems to be arising in anger you will find sometimes this leads to fear it leads to you know sadness it leads to disappointment name all your emotions when you name your emotions on a daily basis you'll constantly become aware of what it is you're feeling you'll be able to identify the separate emotions that are going through you and when you're able to identify these emotions that are going through you it becomes easier for you to stand by them because tomorrow when somebody comes to you and says oh no 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 that's not what you're feeling what you're feeling is not right you'll be able to say no i i am very aware of what i'm feeling i know my emotions i know when they arise what triggers them and what gives rise to them and therefore i don't need to be told what it is i'm feeling for instance in in counseling sometimes we have a client say who's lost someone near to them okay and we tell them you know you must be feeling devastated you must be in so much grief 
and the person sometimes looks at you and says no i'm i'm not feeling devastated what i'm feeling is numb right and this is the reality that all of us process our emotions in different ways no two people's emotions are exactly alike so for me in order for me to be able to comprehend you and what you're going through you need to be clear about what it is you're feeling and it helps if you know the difference between being devastated and being numb so the very first thing to do is to absolutely know your emotions name them identify them understand the sensation that comes up when that happens then you'll be able to move from a state of uh emotional dependency or codependency to emotional independence and when does this happen this only happens when you begin to move inwards when you begin to move inwards when you turn the lens away from what other people are saying your emotion is to what you know your emotion to be when you have turned your gaze inwards identified located understood the sensation sat with the feeling when the knowledge of the self is higher than any knowledge that people outside you claim to profess of you then you will find yourself becoming emotionally independent and this will identify itself in increased confidence increased self knowledge increased self awareness this will further progress to self care self love self nurturing and ultimately into a true independence because when your emotions cannot be dictated or controlled or uh, you know budged from their position by any factor outside you then you will be able to master them then you will be able to let them know what level they should be how much they should be expressed and what it is that needs to come up at what time so this is how you become master of your emotions the first step is emotional independence i hope this really helps you in regulating your emotions do let me know how it goes and if you have any further suggestions leave them in the box